I'm so excited to welcome you today. My name is Olabisi Obayomi, and here with me is my husband, Mr. Biola Obayomi. You're welcome, sir. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's so good to have you. A couple of months back, I know that we had a loss of a child, and you know, after that, and how the Lord has helped us, and how He has strengthened us, and all that He has done for us, uh, we believe that we should come and you know share some of the things that the Lord has you know helped us with and how he's helping us even at this time to share with you know each and every one of us some of us that might be going through grief or that might end up going through it one way or the other or the loss of someone that is really dear to you and that's why we're here so I have my husband here we're going to be discussing it together how did we go with it how what happened no not necessarily what happened but <laughs> so we don't bore you but what's god how god helped us and where we are at this time so so i'm going to be asking you first um what is your understanding of grief well my understanding of grief is actually uh, a sorrow of the heart a, mm. a dampness in one spirit most of the time as a result of the loss of a precious one mm. you know it could be somebody's parent it could be mm. somebody's child in our own case it was our child so that state of emotional you know imbalance that state of emotional you know breakdown mm. you know because most of the time when such things happen the first thing was to start thinking about is how did it happen how how, how come it is me why did this happen and all of that so when you begin to you know consider those questions asking the many questions as as a result of what has happened then that is the state of grief mm. it brings about sadness it, it brings it brings about unhappiness and then you just want to figure out what really went wrong and how all that happened happened most of the time you know the loss of a precious one is not something that anyone is prepared for. Exactly. I don't think there is anyone in the world mm -mm. <laughs> that is prepared for the yeah, loss well. of a precious one. Although there are circumstances, you know, in which people may be sick and mm. then doctors tell the family members, yeah. okay, this so person so have so-so date and all that. But even at that, you will discover that uh, the, the, the people involved, the precious one involved, yeah. they, they still don't anticipate it. Mm. You know, I, I was listening to King Charles, the current king of the uh, United Kingdom right now, in one of the interviews, he said, you know, the loss, the passing of her mother, mm. of his mother rather, is one of the things that he never anticipated, mm. even though he knew that it's so something that would happen day. one day or the yeah. other. So that is usually what happens. You know, nobody prepares or anticipates that he or she is going to lose a precious one. Mm -hmm. So, but eventually when it happens, it brings about grief. It brings, brings about, you know, a, you know, a state where one is not just, uh, one is struggling to, you know, find a, a, a space to accommodate what has just happened even mm -hmm. though it is difficult even though it's not something that happens easily but yeah. just trying to come to terms and reality with what has happened and mm -hmm. that is the process of grief. of grief that is what brings about grief mm -hmm. in one's heart wow okay thank yeah. you so much for that uh for me i know it wasn't really easy actually going through that uh but i would like to ask you as per the fact that a father is usually you know it's believed that a father is usually closer to the daughter you mm. know and in this our case now the child that we lost was a daughter and mm. i know how close you guys were and all of that so how mm. did you take it what well, how did they uh, how, how did it like occur in that sense to you okay. how did you take it well you know there are several there are several stages to grief you know the very first thing that happens is um, denial you, the very first thing you want to you know bring yourself to term with is that this thing that just happened is not happening mm -hmm. so I, I remember when when i when i heard the news when i was told for the first time i, I didn't believe you know, I was like, no, it shouldn't, uh, it shouldn't be. So I was trying to still deny within myself that no, this, this cannot happen to me. You mm. know, I believe. You know, and for several weeks after, yeah. you know, I still find myself asking the question, mm. how, how come should uh, this actually happen mm. to me? 
you know, there, there are times I just, it just comes to me that where this thing happened to people actually across the world, even though it's not something that is palatable, even though it's not something that is sweet in the mouth to talk about, exactly. but most of the time we discover that it actually does happen to yes, people. So the very first thing is that denier, you know, this shouldn't happen to me. I never bargained for this. What happened? What went wrong? And then when you leave that stage, you know, of uh, denier is the next stage you enter into, which is the acceptance, actually, that it has happened. Yeah, I was going to ask that. So <laughs> when did you get to that point of accepting that, okay, this thing has happened, though? <laughs> well, usually it's uh, within some few hours of, you know, when you, when you realize that what has happened has happened. You know, there are certain things that happen to us that we may not be able to undo. Yes. So when you discover that, you know, there is this saying that God give me the courage to change the things that I can change mm -hmm. and the things that I cannot change. Mm -hmm. Give me the faith to be able to, you know, when, when you get to the point when you know that this has happened and it has happened, there is nothing anyone can do about it mm -hmm. again to undo what has been done. Yeah. Then that is the, 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 the place of acceptance. And then from that place of acceptance is where you begin to move on from. Mm. And so because uh, it, 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 uh, the, the, my, my daughter, you know, we, it happens that we were very close. So I, I actually went through these stages, you know, and when I got to the point where I now finally accepted that what has happened has happened, that was when I, be, I began to now bring myself to a state of, okay, how do we move on from from here. from here how do we move on from what has happened and that's those are the faces that usually people go through in grief the denier the acceptance and then most importantly how we move on mm. from what has happened so mm. that healing can begin to take place yes. so that emotional balance can begin to set in again because mm. you can't continue to fixate on what has happened mm. so what has happened has happened how do we move on from this point forward so that we can begin to gain our sanity back so that we can begin to gain our emotions back mm. and become like normal persons that we've used you know we that we are used to, to be. Uh, mm. and uh, move on eventually and, from it um i think the point where you started accepting it was like few hours after that time right? yes few hours because for me it was like after you know what prayed and then we trusted god and then you still knew, knew that no <laughs> this has happened and then you got words of consolation and all of that and yes. then it mm -hmm. just went ahead and that was when the acceptance really happened you know for me mm -hmm. um okay so you said that uh, we now move on to what happens going forward how mm -hmm. are we going to move on with life and all of that yes so how what, what would you say were the things that helped us as a couple um to be able to move on from there because obviously it wasn't a grief is not something that is exciting of course from the definition of grief and how you explained it yes. and grief is not something that anyone looks forward to so how would you say that we're able to move on mm -hmm. from it as a couple how did you how did we help ourselves well, the, the very first thing, uh, you know, that made the acceptance to, to be that easy, you know, where, you know, the ministration of the Spirit. Mm. Now, one of the things that usually helps us is in situations like this is that we have the Holy Spirit. Now, definitely one of the things that the Spirit does is that it comforts. There is a comfort that comes from the Holy Spirit. And, you know, the comfort began immediately because there, are, there were certain words that, you know, kept on coming, yes. you know, to, to my spirit, even though one is going through that process. Mm. So as much as, you know, the devil wants you to wallow in the, in the, in the grief, the, mm. because one of the plans of the devil is that one doesn't come out. Exactly. And that's what causes depression. And right? that is what, what causes depression. So, but in it all, the Holy Spirit comes with soothing words, with mm. words of yeah. comfort. Yeah. And so the more you pay attention to these words, the more you begin to come out of the grief gradually. Mm. And most importantly, one cannot um, negate the place of prayer. I know yeah. there were a lot of people that were praying for yes. us, you know, in, yes. in that instance. You know, I, I, I remember somebody once said that, how come we're able to look so radiant because mm. I think somebody came to our house and mm. then you know the person was coming was surprised, was surprised was coming to grieve <laughs> to grieve and to cry and then the person met us like we're not even crying we're not you know and I believe that didn't just happen, didn't just happen. a lot of people I believe were praying for yes. us and most importantly yes. it's important that you surround yourself 
with people that you know can pray, pray for, for you. you. Uh -huh. Now, not people that we promise you they that they are praying for you. And, and, they, are not actually uh, and they are not actually praying. Yeah. Because we knew that we were able to go through that moment, especially that initial exactly. moment, yeah. and we're able to stay strong in the spirit because I believe a lot of people were actually praying, praying for, for us. us yeah. So, uh, the, the, the comfort of the spirit and prayers of the saints, yes. I believe, were the things that helped us yeah. to go through that particular phase. Even though we're still struggling to accept that what has happened has happened, mm -hmm. but it never really showed, you know, in our countenance and all of that. So I believe those moments, the Holy Spirit will be there to speak to you if you care to listen to Him, because mm -hmm. you just have to listen. Because those are the, the kind of words that the Holy Spirit will supply that that we help you out of that situation most of the time you may not get it from somewhere yeah. else so it's important that you it's pay attention to you know what the spirit is saying mm. to you and then also have people around that are praying that mm. are praying sincerely praying that the holy spirit will send relief and soothing into into one's heart yeah. and so those those are the things i believe and then most of the time we one of the things that i discovered we we're also doing then was talking about you know the memory of the child yes. you know we, we talked about it a lot yes. talked about the times we that spent together to also accept it when yes. like we're not in denial for so long yes yeah. yes so the fact that you've lost a loved one doesn't mean that you can't talk about, about them you yes. know the more you talk about them the more their memories heal. it helps you, one yes. to heal in yes. the heart like yes. you believe that the person is still around you the person is still yes. with you the person probably went on a journey because i know someone once mentioned to me that okay so if someone dies actually it means that the person went on a journey because the person is a believer and because even if it's a child right mm. they don't know right or wrong so obviously they're going back to heaven so mm. you're still going to meet the child later on mm. so you know that this person has gone on a journey yes. and then you're still going to see the person later yes. so it's just like how you're missing the person so while you're missing someone and the person is away what do you do you mm. talk about them them. Yes. You talk about the memories, what you miss about them. Yes. I think we did that a lot with our son. As yes, well. we did that a lot. We, we, we looked at videos, we looked at pictures, and then we just talk about her generally. Yeah. And then those were the things that actually helped us to, you know, to fully accept and mm. to fully also know that she's going to be with, with the, the Lord. Lord. And that is not actually a loss, mm. you know, because whatever you lose to God <laughs> is not a it's loss. Not a loss. Uh -huh. So we believe that she went ahead to be in our future. Yes, and yes, so those were the future. words those, those were the soothing relief that helped us you know in that grieving moment and you know that is still helping us even up until, up now. until now okay yeah. so um i know i mentioned um in, in passing right now about our son so we have a first child right so mm. how did we how would you say we helped him Okay. You know, for people that probably are in maybe a similar situation like this and they are willing to help the, the child that is probably because I know that they were quite close. They were super close in that sense. So mm. how were we able to help him to understand what happened and, you know, well, we, 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 we told one of the things that we actually did is vividly to I remember I, you know, telling him that see your, your sister is not going to be around for a very long time. So I know you will ask, okay, where did she go to? When is she coming back? No, okay, she's not coming back. She's now an angel. So I remember he, he was still talking with uh, his, friend yeah, his friend this friend afternoon. That, and, uh, yes. So he said, okay, my sister is now an, an angel. angel. So for now, that is the understanding that he has. He knows that angels are not people that you just see, see. like that, but they are always there so so that, that was how we were able to help him mm. you know to overcome that stage of you know missing missing like okay every day where's my sister when is she coming back so the moment we we're able to make him realize that your sister is now an angel and then she's around but she's, you can't see her now mm -hmm. so he, he came to that time and most of the time when when he's talking about her he said okay now that my sister is an, is now an angel you know and all of that so he just he just find a way around him so his understanding right now does not uh, cannot undo death mm. and life so yeah. the best way is to look for you know things that you know you know the child the sibling or thereabout can understand mm. and then you relate you know that understanding with them yeah. that also keeps the memory of the of the of the of the of the, of the one who yeah. departed in their consciousness mm -hmm. and uh, but if they are mature sibling definitely they understand that okay you know our sibling is gone it's and it's gone, gone forever yes. but for children who don't probably have understanding yet mm. uh, there is a way you can use certain things to explain, explain to them. them and when they grow older then they can now fully understand that this actually you know was what, what happened, happened and all of that 
Okay. Um, I'd like us to talk about um, were there times that you actually really felt okay? So yeah, we thank God for you know uh, believers praying and all of that at the initial stage, and I trust that people are still probably praying. But did you get to a point where you felt like hi, like you really felt a bit low at a point? For me. There was a particular period in time that I felt a bit low. You remember when I was really just, you know, moody and all of that. And it mm. was like thinking through what has happened and yes. all of that. But I remember that we talked about it. And then prayers as well was what, one thing that later helped me. Yes. And the fact that I was not now considering. I think I got to a point where I was considering too much on what happened. So there are some times like that that it might happen. It's not like it's going to be super, like totally rosy or the way there are times that you're just in that space where you are now beginning to think too much about maybe you're missing the child so much yes. and then you now get to i was almost in that space where i was almost wanting to get into depression actually but thank god for my husband he, you know he called me prayed with me and then i opened up to him and let him also know what happened at that time and then we now consciously started what did we even start doing we, we started you know looking through and yes. praying more about it again yes. because at the initial stage we started worshiping god for her yes. like thanking god for her life and yes, all of that yes, we did yes. it for like a couple of maybe one month thereabouts then mm. we stopped so i think later on when we're not now doing those things consciously yes. it started coming again so at that time we now started consciously praying so did you get to any point personally mm. where you felt a bit down what did you do at those points Yes, I actually did. Like the very few weeks after her passing, they were the heaviest uh, weeks for me. You know, there was no day that actually, you know, passes by then that I don't think about her. So, but most of the time when her memory, you know, actually comes into my consciousness like that, is sometimes I just probably, and most of the time it happens when <laughs> I'm probably alone. Mm. So most of the time I just probably pray. Sometimes I cry, even mm. days after mm. I cried. So, mm. but uh, I just allow the cry to get out that emotion. emotion. Uh -huh. because, mm. because there are times... Anytime I think about her, I just couldn't help myself but cry. And I know why I actually needed to cry. Because if I don't, I, 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 don't, I didn't plan to bottle up that exactly. emotion. Uh, there were times, I just let it out mm. through crying. There were times when, when I go back to my phone and I see a picture and it, it triggers some memories and all that. So what I did was to archive her pictures and delete them temporarily yeah, from where me. I can easily assess, assess them. So those were the, 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 the difficult times for me. The first three, four, five weeks of a uh, of, uh, of, uh, departure was really heavy on me but as time you know went on most of the time when i remember now i remember fondly mm, the memories yeah. and all of that so but initially it was not so so what what happens is that we we outgrow grief mm. with time it's mm. not something that would depart all no. of a sudden, except no. if the if the person involved doesn't mean anything to you. Exactly. If it's not somebody that you love, but exactly. if it is the the loss of a loved one, it usually takes time. Mm -hmm. So with time, you outgrow the grief, mm. and then with time, you grow into fond memories mm. of the person. So it is this it is this memories that you live on with mm. for the rest of your life. Mm. So we can't say outrightly that you know. It won't happen that you won't miss of the person. Course, you, will definitely no, you will definitely miss the person. Miss the person but, but it's just good that we give ourselves to the Spirit, allow yes, the Lord walk in us. Yes, and, yes. Yeah. Most importantly, allow the Spirit to comfort you. Mm. Then give yourself to studying the Word of God. Let the Word of God, you know, help you mm. to overcome. Mm. You know, the and grief. go to scriptures to to learn from those that probably yes are yeah. grieved. You know, there are a couple of things we may not be able to say they fully. Actually, you know, yeah. in this episode, maybe subsequent times we still talk about some other things mm. that actually is helping me you know that is still helping me up yeah. until now maybe in subsequent episodes of, to, of the council okay but the last question i think I, I want us to touch on would be um how has he helped us as a couple going forward now well it has it has uh, built you know that environment of love more it has built that environment of spirituality more mm -hmm. we are now more conscious, conscious we are yeah. now more deliberate, deliberate about you know spiritual things yes. now that you know before it used to be 
these things cannot happen cannot to me. Happen. Exactly. But now that it has happened, so yeah, you, it, you know it now that. helps you to know mm -hmm. that some of these things do actually happen, happen to mm. people. So it now makes you to be more conscious, to be more proactive and mm. deliberate exactly. about the way and manner you know we live as couples yes. and all that. So thank you for that. Thank you thank for you coming. So the last so and final thing I want us to talk about would be lessons learned. So what would you say are, are the lessons that you've learned so far? Well, the lessons it? simple for me is don't take anything for granted. Yes. Uh, don't take anything for granted. Yes, be intentional. Be intentional about <laughs> Be intentional. Anything. When they are here, like, nobody is saying that you lose anybody, but when people are here, present with you, please give them your whole, give them your love, give them your 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 time. Yes. <laughs> give them as much as you can give them because really, not everybody would be here forever. We won't all be here forever, really. Yes, yes. Uh, I trust that you've been blessed on this exciting episode of The Counselor, having blessed myself and refreshed. Thank you for coming, sir. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, you're welcome. Yes, God bless you. Uh, please share with someone that you know that is going through this at this time. Uh, like, comment if you love this and talk about what you would like us to, you know, speak on in the comment section as well and we'll be glad to do that as the Lord leads us in Jesus name. God bless you. If you're going through grief, please can you say a word of prayer very quickly for anyone? Father, we thank you for this moment. Lord, you, Lord, we pray for as many people that are watching this who may be going through one grief or the other. We ask that the Holy Spirit will comfort them in the Amen. name of Jesus. We ask that the Holy Spirit will speak words of edification and comfort into their hearts. Amen. And the Holy Spirit will help them to heal in the mighty name of amen. Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. amen. God bless you, everyone. My name is Olabi Silva. Biomi once again and this is my guest Abiola Obayomi. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much.